Greetings, everyone. My name is Maureen Mooney, a longtime resident of Merrimack and a member of the Rotary Club of Merrimack. I'm here to host a very special edition of a Rotary television show featuring a very special guest. Our guest on this program is the district governor of Rotary's District 7870. His name is John Bob Semenovich. And the topic of today's show is the extraordinary efforts that the district has undergone to provide relief to Ukraine. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to our guest today, John Bob. John Bob, welcome. Thank you, Maureen. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's start with the basics, essentially, and that is, what is Rotary International? Rotary International is a fellowship of like-minded Rotarians around the globe. There are about approximately 1.4 million Rotarians globally, and that is occupied in about 46,000 Rotary clubs around the globe. And we are um, the District 7870 of that, which there is about 500 districts globally. So it's groups of clubs to form districts, and that's how we run our organization. Wow, that's a huge organization and all over the globe. And Merrimack is so fortunate to have a club of its own that just celebrated its 50th anniversary, actually, last year. Congratulations. So we're so happy to uh, be able to be here and a service to the community. What charities and causes has Rotary contributed to over the years? The main focus of Rotary International is to eradicate polio from the globe. And Maureen, we were at that conference last weekend and the president-elect, Jennifer Jones, indicated to us that we're close to the eradication of polio. Wow. There were only six wild polio cases on the globe last year. Amazing, yeah. And the other thing that comes to light right now in the crisis that we're in with Ukraine is peace resolution and avoiding conflict. So I would say those are the two most important parts right now. Yeah, amazing. Some of our viewers may recognize the Merrimack Rotary from its turkey trot on Thanksgiving morning, Christmas tree sales, 4th of July, a pancake breakfast, and otherwise all to raise money for the local community. Now you are the district governor for Rotary District, one of the districts you mentioned, 7870. So tell us, what is that Rotary District? 7870 is a, is a Rotary District of... 59 Rotary Clubs in Southern Vermont. We have all of Southern Vermont from Rutland South and most of Southern New Hampshire. We do not encompass uh, Portsmouth or Salem, New Hampshire, but all the rest from the Lakes region down of Southern New Hampshire are represented by my district. And we have approximately, probably just north of 1,850 members right now. Wow. It's amazing. And to get to where you are in the district, to be district governor, is an enormous route to take. You had a lot of years of preparation and a lot of things to do during your Rotary year. So congratulations on all of that. And um, I hope the journey has been a great one so far. But one of the biggest things that's happened in your district since you became district governor is the money that you have raised specifically for Ukraine relief. Ukraine has been in our thoughts and prayers in the news all of the time. So tell us more about that. Well, the short story of that, Maureen, is that my grandmother was actually a Ukrainian uh, immigrant back oh. in the early 1900s. And my grandfather is Polish. Uh, they didn't meet over there. They met here in the United States. And um, so my lineage is both with Poland and Ukraine. And I thought about what was going on there and I felt this need to provide some court relief for us here, watching the theater over there, and something that would be positive for the Ukrainians that were fleeing the country into Poland. Um, not to go too deep with this, but I was concerned that if I started a venture where I was sending uh, financial aid to Ukraine, the potential that it wouldn't reach the most needy, so I chose to work through Poland. Wow. A press release has recently gone out and it's available on the Merrimack patch with regards to all the efforts that the district has done to provide that relief. You're quoted actually in the press release as saying, I can no longer sit silent while the people of Ukraine suffer such inhumane devastation. 
So with that, we have a photograph, actually, a series of photographs that we can go through that really highlight where all of this extraordinary relief has gone. So the first photo that we have is uh, this one here of a wall. What does this display, John Bob? This was just kind of the essence of how I feel. And um, my fellow club members were recently in Europe on a vacation trip, and they found this graffiti on the wall. And I think graffiti can be very positive. And I, when I read this, I just thought that it's kind of like makes us think about what's going on. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a message to everyone. Uh, definitely. Very powerful indeed. We have some more photos here as well. The next one, here we have, uh, looks like a doctor standing next to numerous boxes. Yeah, uh, Maureen, we're going to go through two of our projects, um, two of our major projects of the funds that we've raised as a district. Um, this was a project where the Polish Rotary Clubs, and they have a district governor just like myself, and a district governor-elect, which we also have. The district governor-elect, Poitra, we were able to connect with him on Facebook. Wow. Um, yeah. it, was, it wasn't very difficult, but really took some ingenuity to find him. And he is very similar to me. He's two years younger than I am, and he will be their district governor next year. Poland is a district, the whole country is one district, and they have about 72 clubs. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to build a field hospital. This would be within the first or second week of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So they wanted to establish a field hospital for the wounded in the safe zone between the two countries. So this was our initial uh, medical supplies being labeled with rotary labels. And we worked with the uh, Polish Police Association. So when we got this stuff and we shipped it over to what we thought was going to be the field hospital, mm -hmm. would be in the next picture. All right, we'll go to the next picture. Oh, here we have, it looks like a bus. Yeah, yeah. This, is what we, this is the Polish uh, Police Association's bus. And this was what we, where we thought we were going to end up. Okay. But then the bombing of the military installation in Levy occurred, and the Polish Rotarians decided to move the field hospital 100 kilometers inside of Ukraine to treat the wounded. Okay. So either this is coming or going, but this was not the end result of our hospital. Okay. Wow. That incredible footage here. Okay, here we it looks like equipment here. So in a period of about 10 days, we raised... Um, this was a, a 45,000 U.S. dollar project. Wow. The conversion on 45 U.S. dollars to Polish dollars is 4.25, 4.26 so per U.S. dollar. Okay, wow. So the multiplier is four and a quarter, basically, on every dollar we raised. Amazing. Every piece of equipment in these next following pictures was purchased by our district. Oh, okay. By the funds we raised. It was all packaged up. It was all labeled with Vermont, New Hampshire, District 78706 oh. stickers. Wow. That's amazing to think that way far away, you know, all of this um, is coming right back to our district right. where we're located. And the, the thing about it is we don't know where to get this equipment, but they knew where to get it. Sure. And so we were able to finance the purchase of this. And I actually believe that they bought it on credit as they're waiting for our funds to come over. Okay. For example, this machine here, I'm seeing the rotary emblem uh, along with the district name there. What exactly would that machine do? I'm not a doctor, Maureen, so oh, I don't okay. really know. <laughs> okay, I see. I do, I do yeah. know that there's one machine that's handheld that's a um, therapeutic machine for relieving pain. And that was an ask I got last week. Uh, we sent another $5,000 last week in the wire to purchase more of those machines. I see. But okay. these were selected by the medical team at the field hospital for the needs that they had. Yes. And these will remain in that hospital, you know, as long as their, their usefulness is is valid, you know, everything probably has to be updated after a period of time. But. Yeah, just incredible, that's for sure. And again, there's that rotary wheel on everything. It's amazing the humanitarian aid that Rotary offers right here in our district. All right, we do have, um, and this picture here, yes, this is a, the doctor. This is a doctor and the policeman that brought the equipment to him in Ukraine. Okay. Um, one of the other things that happened that I probably didn't tell you about this, but the Polish people were encouraging the Ukrainians to come across because um, they didn't really want to drive into Ukraine. But working with the police association, we were able to hit the objective and get that 100 kilometers with inside the Ukrainian border to deliver this, this equipment. I see. Isn't that something? And everybody looks um, so relieved, really, that this has arrived. 
All right, this starts then another series with regards to a project that was funded. So what does this now start? This one's um, equally as impactful, but it's a lot more family oriented. This was a house and I've been to Poland and this is kind of a typical Polish style home, but this is pretty substantial in its size. Okay. Most of the homes aren't this large. This home was established as a hospice or a treatment center um, for Ukrainians, children, to actually come during peacetime to Poland. Um, it never really got fully funded, so the house was here for us, working again with the Polish Rotarians. They realized that this facility could be used as housing, wow. as a hospice for women and children. So this is move-in day, yeah. and the house is beautiful. But as you can see, there's still some construction materials around. It wasn't finished. Yeah. So what they asked us to was to outfit it. Okay. So in this series of pictures, this is the kitchen on move-in day. Oh, isn't that something? Very, very, very busy kitchen. Yeah, very similar to ours, you yeah. know, just European. Okay. And then here's the dorm rooms for the children. Um, so we were invited to purchase the bedding, the beds, the cookware supplies for the fit out of the house. And I really am proud of this project. Yeah. Um, it's named The Little Prince after the children's book, The Little Prince. Isn't that remarkable? And, you know, I'm very grateful that we were able to be there for them. And again, this is about week number three of the invasion. Yeah, right. Isn't that something? All this progress and everything so clean and orderly, really amazing under your leadership as district governor, how the district really came together uh, to make this work very quickly for people in need. You know, you mentioned uh, all of this started with a contact on Facebook. So how difficult would you say in terms of uh, challenging was it to make contact with someone and get this started? Well, it, it, it was a little challenging because you had to find somebody that was friends with somebody in Poland. And yeah. again, my focus being of my ancestry was to focus on Poland because I thought we could have the most impact. And I had been in Lubin in that area of Eastern Poland. So I was familiar with the way the land looked, the way the people were, and I felt very comfortable with working with them that we could communicate and be successful. Yeah, absolutely. Now, both Rotarians and non-Rotarians contributed to the effort? Yes. Um, we have angels that came out of nowhere out of their trust funds. Isn't that something? Yeah. We had Rotarians. We had Rotarians in other districts. We had Rotarians from the district north of us. We're trying to find an avenue. I was just very intrigued by how people responded. I never, never thought that it would get to this magnitude. Yeah. Maureen, right now we have funded 120,000 US, 125 as of last Friday yeah. into Poland. Oh my goodness, and, amazing. and again, such a short amount of time, but Rotarians are, are so generous, and we see that in our community, we're seeing it now in the district, just outstanding. Mm -hmm. We do have another photo, and I know this photo is one of your favorites, so you'll probably wanna spend some time discussing this, and it's quite touching, actually, like they all are. But here we have uh, some very happy people holding a bottle of medicine. And it looks like a beautiful day, actually. Yeah. So what is in this photo exactly? Well, this was this is Vladivostok, Poland, up near Belarus. And the initial ask by this Rotary Club was for laptop computer financing for eighth graders, Ukrainian eighth grade children that were in Poland, and that they could get their certificate to move on to secondary school into ninth grade. So the Polish education system said, if you can I'm gonna to get to the bottle, but if you could get us laptop computers and they could get their graduation certificates by zooming back into Ukraine to finish their education, we will move them on into secondary school in Poland. Wow. And being the time span that would maybe occur between this and that, they would be able to learn Polish as opposed to Ukrainian because they're not the same language. Yeah. And when I was talking to this individual, which is Thomas, who is the um, president of the Rotary Club, he said, I need 50, I need 30 to 40 computers. We actually bought 50. Wow. But yeah. as we were doing that, he, he emailed me on WhatsApp, or contacted me on WhatsApp and said, I have a problem. I have a 14 month old boy who needs medication that the Polish medical system will not provide to us. Okay. I said, take some of the money and go buy the medication to save that little boy. Yeah. And here's the medicine that I believe saved a little boy that I'll never meet. Yeah, right. And put life ahead of 
everything else. Isn't that something? So moving, really. Uh, imagine the significance of that bottle of medication, and like you said, and to someone you've never met who's under such um, duress right now, it's really incredibly amazing. So that money now, we've gone through the field hospital, the little prince house, uh, laptop computers for students, and medication. It's amazing how much that money stretches. Other clubs contributed, correct? Correct. Um, I put out two challenges. I put out my third challenge today to a club in California. Um, I'm, I'm able to parlay or part out $5,000 units of our income that is coming from our donors. Right. And so the first one was with Pointe Gorda, Pointe Gorda, Florida. Okay. They were having the same thoughts I was having, and they were having trouble um, establishing the uh, momentum to get the fundraising going. So when I was looking at these um, Rotary Clubs in Poland, I was looking at their websites and their Facebook feeds, I, was, I saw this number. It was a California area code, and I, I called it okay. as I was driving. Yeah. Person didn't answer, so I left a voicemail. I said, this is John Bob from Rotary District 7870. I see that you have some involvement in Poland in helping with relief. I'm wondering what that is. And as we're driving back down from Guilford, New Hampshire after a selectman's meeting um, for Rotary, um, I got a call from James. And James says, I think I got a message from you. I said, yes, that's correct. He said, I'm having trouble raising funds. I said, I'm having a joyous time raising funds, actually. And I said, if I pledge $5,000, if you can raise $5,000 by next week, will that help you? Yeah. He said, I'll try. He had, at that point, raised $1,000. Okay, wow. Within that week, they had raised $35,000. Oh, my goodness. So that happened what again. A... We have another pledge with a club in Florida right now yeah. uh, of $5,000. And they're going to do a fundraising event, and we'll see what that turns into. And tonight, the district governor-elect in Poland is meeting with a Rotary Club in California, and I told him to offer a challenge to that club that will put up 5,000, if they can put up 5,000 in the next week. Amazing. So this project is stretched beyond the district and... Uh, yeah, we're, we're wow. working with clubs in Germany. We're working with clubs, uh, well, they are, the Polish Rotary Clubs are working in Germany, Austria, and Spain. Yeah, it's amazing uh, what you obtain when you ask. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you just made that call and didn't that blossom into <laughs> exceptional resources. So that is great, that's for sure. Um, all right, let's talk about some other projects that the uh, Rotary District has done. Uh, for example, Food for Odessa. I know that was one that came up recently. What was that? Yeah, um, that was, again, a WhatsApp communication, either verbally you know, on the phone or we were doing it via text. Um, they were finding that the food shortages were very, very much impacting the people who still were in Ukraine. Okay. Stocks were limited. And what the call-out was for... Products that have a long shelf life, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking like of canned meat or um, any soup, sure. anything that has a very long shelf life. Yes. Because we don't know how long this is going to last, and so when that came across, we again contacted the Polish district, which is two two three one, talked to the district governor elect, and he said, if I could have five thousand dollars in your next wire transfer, I would use it for that that purpose. Mm -hmm to tell everybody what's going on, we wire transferred, we've wire transferred every week, once a week, since the second week of the invasion. Wow, yeah. Um, so we're on a little bit of a pause right now. I talked to Poland this morning and we're regrouping and they asked us if they could count on another $5,000 for a hospital supplies for Levy. And I said, you can count on it because we'll have it for you next week. Oh, amazing. Wow. Uh, the Rotary motto is service above self, and you're exercising that for sure under your leadership. This is an, a phenomenal. It isn't just me, though, Maureen. It's all of us. I, yes. I've grown so much to enjoy the friendships that I built with our district members, and it's not, it's not one person. One person can't row this boat. Right. Um, it takes all of us, yes. and I thank you for being Rotarian and helping me. Oh. Well, again, thank you. My pleasure. It's always a, it's a blessing to be able to serve others, that's for sure. And so we're almost out of time, but uh, we certainly uh, have covered a lot of material here, and we're always keeping Ukraine uh, and those who are helping out on the ground over there in our thoughts and prayers, that is for sure, as we all closely watch the news and get updates and do what we can to assist 
people around the globe in need. Any concluding remarks, John Bob, before we sign off? No. Uh, well, yes and no. It's all about people. And, you know, we talk about projects, but projects is a funny word. It's really the people that do the projects. These are tasks that are given to us, and we as humans in need and want to help people, we as the people make these things happen. Yeah, very well put, that's for sure. Wow, what a, what a show, what a topic. Incredible how much can get done. Thank you so much for your service. Certainly want to thank our viewers and our production team, Justin and Nick and Merrimack TV. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.